Hi everyone. Hi guys. Um, so we, this is this is just a little chat about a house that I I mean I certainly didn't know. Um, and I think it's is new to both of us, but sort of three little interesting gems with some potential for. for some yeah. So this is a, a visitor parfum. It's called visitor, but it's spelt V slash. And so you can't look it up if you try to look it up from fragrant or anything. You can't find it because it's spelt weirdly. But this visitor, uh, it's a new um, newish Swedish house. It actually was launched in two thousand eighteen, so it's not that new. But the um, uh, chap got in touch um, via Instagram and asked if we wanted to uh, smell these samples. So we sent them. And, yeah, I think there's some quite interesting fragrances here, three fragrances, yeah. quite clear storytelling. So the um, this is a uh, okay. Swedish yeah. house. Oh, there aren't, I can't think of many, apart from Byredo, I can't think of any other Swedish houses. Maybe, can you think? There aren't many. Do you know, is Lalabo, I think Lalabo might be Swedish. Not sure. I might be wrong about that, but I, I remember I remember seeing a couple of quite good ones when I was in Stockholm a couple of years ago, and I can't remember the names. I I, I smelt them and thought, oh, that's really interesting, and then mm. I completely forgot about them. Uh, but there are there are some, but not very many at all. I mean, it's it's underrepresented as a country, I would say. Yeah, um, but so these have some new blood. Absolutely. He um, so on, on the website, it's got the uh, kind of mission statement that visitor will take you on a journey to specific places and moments in time. And I think smelling them, that is that is fair. There's the storytelling in these three fragrances, I think, is really clear. And they're all of them are in kind of really clear two acts. Um, you know, it's, kind of, it's, all, it's all laid out on the website, it's good, but when you smell them, you definitely get two things, which is really great. I love storytelling yeah. fragments, which takes me on a journey. They are €145 Euros for 75 mil EDP. So it's kind of like upper mid kind of pricing of niche, yeah. same as Chanel exclusive, that kind of um, price. So, so not, cra not crazy by any means. No. Should we, should we get um, stuck yeah, in? Yeah, let's get stuck in. So the, the first... The first one I tried was Cabaret Nocturne um, because I saw the name uh, Cecile uh, Zurichin. Um, you know, whenever you see her name, it's going to be worth, you know, it's going to be worth trying. What's your, uh, Mars Milano, Absolutely. Tango, Amouage, Epic Woman, Hour Sublime, Babijou, Jervois, Private Label, uh, various things for MDCI, mm. Annie from The Shame, lots of great things. Um, so this fragrance, Cabaret Nocturne, was not originally called Pensao Amor, which means love hotel in Portuguese. So it's based on a real bar called Pensao Amor uh, in uh, Lisbon, um, which used to be a brothel. So it's oh. juxtaposing this modern uh, Lisbon nightlife in this bar with somewhere which used to be a brothel frequented um, by sailors. And the two parts of this are the past and the present. So we've we've both had these samples um, for a little while. We've been kind of wearing them to get a bit of experience. Them just reminding ourselves of this. They are really good, actually. I really liked the um, opening of this. So I've just got a little uh, yeah, uh, ginger, ginger martini just to kind of get me focused. Um, well, I can't focus the camera up, see. Um, so this opens with quite a bit. I get this kind of gin, bitter orange, almost making me think of a Negroni. Yeah, I know what you mean. Mm. Quite it's boozy, quite, quite little little sort of smoky hints. Little at the start, the, the smoke is just um, kind of subtle, but it's it's fizzy and it's energetic. I don't know if there's a, a hint of incense or I think it or is it. There's like maybe pink pepper, which is something I don't like when pink pepper's overdone. It's overdone in so many designer fragrances. But here, yeah. it just gives you a kind of a bit of fizz as opposed to that overly in your face. But it's it's quite floral to me as well, the opening. I found mm. quite a lot of quite ripe floral going on. I feel that although I'm, the things I'm saying are quite bright and fizzy, almost straight away there is this kind of thickness to it. Yeah, you know this kind of that you Chilling get like most as well. yeah, exactly. Kind of a kind of white floral kind of density. It's really beautiful, actually. I did. It, what's weird is I've. I remember when I tried this before. I tried it on card and I tried it on skin, and I found on 
card, the top lasts much longer. I found on skin it started to um, uh, develop quicker. So when I'm kind of reminding uh. myself, I'm getting a, a bit more top. Um, yeah, you, you get a bit of smoke, don't you? But it's not... I don't think this is a smoky it's fragrance. Just tinned. Yeah. It's more of a warm... Thing I, yeah, I mean, the, the thing I get straight away is it's really classical. Yeah. Like, it, you know, if, if you said to me this was... Mm. This was an undiscovered Guerlain from from the turn of the century. I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate in thinking, oh, maybe, you know, like like a cousin to Apre Londe or something. Big white, yeah, floral, yeah. slightly powdery sort of aspect. Maybe just that gin and pink pepper make it feel a little bit more, uh, a little bit more modern. Maybe at the start. Yeah, but I also get there's there's you get a bit of you don't get it on the card yet, but certainly on skin, I got this kind of powdery. Sort of aldehydic a little bit, not out and yeah. out aldehydes, just a hint. I I definitely found an aldehydic aspect here. Yeah, but almost almost slightly otherworldly, like I don't know, like that sort of Ganymede or something. That's slightly space age thing in the dry down from the aldehydes. I don't know, I don't know what's happening there, but I I definitely got that impression. And I, I felt that kind of dragged yeah, well. me a bit out of that kind of like fizzy, energetic party cocktail, pink peppery world. Took me, you know, as you said, in like kind of drags you out and takes you in a slightly different um, direction. I did feel, yeah, I feel the top, I would have liked, you know, sometimes top tops go quite quickly. That, that, that the top on this, I felt goes quite soon. Um, and we start to yeah. get to this um, kind, of, kind of mid. Um, it's it, it and the, the the mid is lovely and creamy with a hint of this kind of slightly like powderiness. It's never like I don't think it's a big aldehyde fragrance at all. Um, I was a bit surprised because she lists tuberos in it, and I do get. I mean, there's definitely uh, some white, floor, truly white floral, but I I almost couldn't pick out tuberos. Like I wouldn't have thought tuberos either, to be honest. I yeah. Um. I was a, I was finding more linden and lily and mm, and that sort of world. I, I, I was surprised to um, you know I was kind of as I was trying I went to see the, kind of the description on the website and I expected it to develop into this tubero slightly animalic vintage feeling thing, a vintage yeah feeling and I didn't I didn't really get that. It goes into this yeah slightly powdery, quite creamy, slightly tobaccoy. Quite sexy, yeah, sandalwoody. Um, uh, the dry not down big of surprises, the, I think. No, the, the dry down doesn't excite me as much as the. I think I, I smelt the top. I thought, oh, this is quite nice. Looked up, looked it up on the website as I was letting it um, uh, develop on skin, and thought, oh, is it going to get to this tuberose animalic thing? Um, and it doesn't really. I don't think. I, no. I definitely get. No. You know. It definitely does change mood. There's a big, there's a bit of a gear shift, but it doesn't quite take me where I want it to go. No, I mean, it, do you know if you if you sprayed that fragrance on me and said, "This, you know, I've made I've made half of a fragrance. This is the top, and the you know the base is still to come, or the the mid and the base is still to come." I would believe you. I I I don't find it a, a complete journey from top to bottom. I, it, it feels very top heavy in terms of in terms of lots of bright notes. I'm not getting any real base. I mean, maybe it's the two act thing, like you said. Yeah, um, I I I don't, that idea. I don't know. My experience is a bit different. I because I felt there was a definite top, and that went quite quickly. And I went to this slightly powdery, slightly tobacco, slightly sandalwoody, quite creamy, and with a hint of white florals. So I did feel I did make that transition, but I just thought the transition was going to be further. Yeah, well, no, I, I get that. I yeah. got the transition as well, but I mean, I I feel like it's I feel like it's transitioned to that stage, and then there would still be bass notes to come. Yeah, somehow it it, it feels like we've kind of stopped midway through, and there's another act which hasn't happened. Yeah, I think I think that's right. Because it was, I mean, it was that I, I felt you kind of almost went the full journey in like half an hour, and yeah, where totally. you got in half an hour was then where you stayed. Yeah. Um, yeah, nice. Which is very nice. I mean, I'm not, it's I'm it's not good. It's that, but, you know. I yeah, I do. I did enjoy it. It's it's a nice fragrance. It just doesn't. Um, 
it didn't quite take me all the way. Starting yeah. with the promise. Right. What should we do next? Um, um, well, we Thousand do... Lakes was the next one I tried, but I did. Yeah, you. let's go for it. Thousand Lakes. So this is uh, Marie Schneere. Mm. Um, she is a young uh, perfumer, part of a studio called um, Maelstrom. And Beach Bazaar, the other fragrance, is by another perfumer who's part of the studio. So she, yeah, quite, if you look her up on, uh, they, they look up what fragrances she's produced. Um, she's done uh, Pavilion Rouge by Jovoy. So all of them seem to have done a, a fragrance for Jovoy. So perhaps some kind of link with the house. Anyway, this fragrance, Thousand Links, the little um, blurb on the website says, running naked uh, through newly cut grass surrounded by silver birch trees. Um, and your two acts here are... Skinny dip and a sauna session. How did you get on with this? I had a few of those. <sighs> um, I liked it, actually. I did like it. Um, I didn't like it as much as the cabaret, but I found it interesting. I found it very... I found it very kind of arresting in the opening. I found I found this kind of birchy, kind of slightly dried out... sort of dried out twigs and and fruit thing going on, which was really interesting. Um, and I got a certain, I got a certain kind of flintiness. Well, it's stone. Which was kind of, kind of not really, <laughs> yeah, sort of. I mean, it, it, it's just sort of hard to describe, but a, a kind of flinty, chalky aspect, but not, uh, not Iris. Um, it was interesting. Interesting. I, sort of great fruity, I thought- Freshness. I definitely got this kind of fruity vibe. I got a kind of greenness. I, unlike the the previous fragrance, I far preferred the dry down of this, the opening. Um, there's a slight kind of harsh greenness t- to the yeah. opening of, of this. I don't. It's not galvanum. It's it, there's something else which is almost mineralic. Isn't isn't the word, but something a little bit almost kind of screechy at uh, uh, the beginning of this, which which I find a little bit difficult. And there's a, there's also a, a blackberry or black currant accord in this, which it, it did give me the, the suggestion of fruit, but it just wasn't, um, I just it didn't like it that much. I, yeah. I kept thinking of, you know, Recolva by Haeckel's, which has got that yeah. amazing kind of black currant and incense and is, and really makes you feel like you're, you're in the woods and you've, you, you're stumbling across, um, fruit and bushes and trees. And, and I think that was, uh, more uh, successful than it is here. But when we got, to, so the skinny dip for this, I didn't like so much, but I liked, I really liked the sauna. Um, I really like the sauna for this one, actually. Um, I really like where it it took me. I, th- I felt that kind of those um, what I found slightly harsh kind of greeny notes at the beginning kind of all disappeared, and I went mm. to this kind of birchy woody. Um, it's not like it's not like campfire woods. It, it did feel like I was in a sauna when you get that slightly burnt wood um, smell yeah. in a sauna. I really, for me, which is it was nice smell, it's a lovely smell, and it's the one of the the, the, the clearest. Um, uh, you know, olfactory images of a, of a sauna I've, I've smelt in a fragrance. How, I mean, did you get that as well? I, I kind of did. I, for me, the thing, the thing that I got, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing, but I got a real sense of lotion, like, you know, like a, like a gym changing room where <laughs> people would have the showers and rub things into themselves, like some sort of body oil before getting into the sauna or afterwards. I don't know which order. I don't spend a lot of time in gyms, but, that I that idea of some sort of lotion that then is activated by your your body heat and your sweat, um, and I found even though there's a sort of slightly birchy opening, I found a lot more smoke in this sort of in the second half of this. Oh yeah, definitely. It got, it got smokier. Yeah. It got richer. I think coming back to the opening, I think the thing I'm finding now, having sprayed it again, is black currant, but not a nice black currant like you'd have in a kind of black currant tea. Or a crumble, but sort of black currant lozenges with this slightly astringent. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Yeah, thing. Yeah, which it's a slight, it's a slight detour. But no, I, 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 I like the base. I, I got that strong association with with mm. gym lotions, and it's not a, it's not a bad thing at all. I mean, I, I kind of like that smell. 
Yeah, it's mm-hmm. interesting because I, I really, I for, for me, I had this clear idea of um, a sauna, and and I really like the picture that came in my head of this kind of sauna in the woods with the with the you know slightly burnt wood. Um, mm. Yeah, and I did. It's I think the the dry down of this was the part out of all three of fragrances which I enjoyed the most. Yeah, it's it's got. I mean, just in that opening again, but I, I, I'm wearing it on the same patch where I had it earlier. It's got it's got a sort of gentle animalic purr going on as well. Mm. Just like a little body sweat thing. A little bit, yeah. I found yeah, I found it really lovely and it's and it, although we, although although we're describing something smoky, I don't didn't find the it's not like a cady smoky like imagine your author city on fire that kind of smoke or oh, like right. a zoologist T Rex not at all. It's quite um, sexy and intimate. I found. I think like yeah, going back like to what you were saying about the this, yeah, going back to what you were saying about the kind of skin, it feels quite human and yeah, I, I did yeah. enjoy. It. I think it's an interesting fragrance. Right, should we move on? Definitely, definitely. So right. what do we have next? Be- Beach yeah. Bizarre. So this is um, by uh, Patrice Réviard. So as I said, he was he's also part of the studio called um, uh, Maelstrom. Um, he, and I just looked up about him, he won, from my understanding, he won a competition to recreate Iris Gris by uh, Jacques Fat, the extremely famous Irish scent, um, and it was released as Liris de Fat. Um, I remember seeing it in, in Jovoy and it was, I can't remember, hundreds of years. When we were in Paris, we went to the, the Jovoy there. Yeah. Um, no, 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 in the actual Jovoy shop in Paris. They've got oh, the, the, the shop, re- yeah, in those yeah, big bottles. Recreation. Yeah, kind of like pointed. And they have green, green water and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I'll tell you what, it's good, actually. <laughs> it is it good. Is. I'm just I'm enjoying it. This is um, Beach Bazaar. It's sun and fun and anxiety and stress. Let me just give myself another spray. See, this is, unlike um, the previous one, I I feel he's managed to get this kind of like tropical fruit thing. I think it's done very beautifully and very realistically. I think this kind of fruity opening can be so difficult to do. Yeah. It can veer too much into the over-sweet or kind of poppy sugary confection yeah. like lilt really or like easily. yeah i think it's it's really done it can smell well, really it, cheap and nasty and it feels like it's really balanced with some um nice some florals as well so it's not just about fruit it's kind of balanced by a hint of florals almost like bitter gardenia or something like that you know something which just drags away from the sweetness yeah I wonder it, also if there's if there's something quite quite dirty in there, like a little sort of dirty jasmine or ylang ylang or something. Yeah, I think there's something indolic, isn't there? There's something which just yeah. adds even from the start amidst it's this. It's a lemon. Um, maybe. It's it's a really interesting beach, you know, sun and fun. It's not it's not a kind of obvious um you know, cheap, playful sun of the sun. It's quite a serious, it's, it feels fun, but, mm. it, you know, it's, it's a very elegant, sophisticated beach yeah. um, smell. Um, it, plays up, it plays up a lot more for me, this one, in the opening and the and the sort of dry down later. It plays up much more on the salty aspects yeah, I was just, yeah, just about, of yeah. the sea, doesn't it? It's much yeah. more, like Sal Moran by Healy, mm. but I think kind of done even better and more interestingly than that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's what's good is because I I got this kind of slightly lime and salty kind of vibe, but it never went in a mojito way. Yeah, you know, it managed to somehow have you know the components, the potential components of a mojito without going in that you know uh, slightly trashy kind of cocktail. Well, it felt much more kind of natural. Um, and then oh, we get this. Really good. You get yeah, <laughs> it's interesting smelling again. I haven't smelled it on car before. It smells really good on car. Um, it then takes you on this next part of this journey, which is to this like real, for me, I thought it was kind of like cannabis, ganja, patchouli kind of place. Oh. Um, um, yeah. And it was, um, see, again, this, this is another, when it, when it started to go there and it started to go in this cannabis patchouli way, I was reminded of um, Cosé 
by Pierre Guillaume, um, which is a great kind of dark green cannabis kind yeah. of fragrance. Um, and I felt this didn't go um, anywhere near as far as Cosé. Um, I think Cosé is more kind of all, all, all about that. So you don't get quite as far. Or well, there's think, that um, Beaufort one, isn't there? Which was it called East India once upon a time? I can't remember what it is now. There's a really, there's a really cannabisy one. Uh, I, can't I can't remember. I thought East India was kind of like gingerbread and tea, and was it Vietnamese? Mm. I can't remember. Oh, Vietnamese. That's it. Yeah, that's the one. Um. Yeah, it was. It was a shame, and I, I still get this kind of persistent salt thing. You know you know, kind of ambergris yeah. kind of like uh, re- recreation. Um, again, it was, I think where it ended up, I didn't enjoy as much as the start. Like all of these, I said, there's this clear two act thing all the way through, which I really like. And I really like the storytelling for me, for this one, the start was better than the dry down. It's with, with as I said to you, I think I said off camera at the beginning for each of these fragrances, there's one half I really like. I don't think there was quite, any of these fragrances where I really like both halves. No, I, I agree. I mean, I have to, I have to say, smelling this again, I prefer it to the other two in terms of that opening. Yeah, it's really I, good, I'm always it? looking for a sort of fresh, like a fresh summery thing, yeah. but that's a lot more interesting than just a, a citrusy aquatic. Yeah, and I think this does it. I think it, I, I would definitely, I would definitely wear something like this in the summer. It's a. The, I mean, especially the opening is a very, very classy, elegant, well, you know, to my nose, well composed opening to a fragrance. Really yeah, good top. Exactly. Good. So there we go. Interesting stuff. Three fragrances. As, as, you, as you said, as you said at the beginning, they're really interesting. There's some good work going in here. For me, I don't think I would buy one. If, mm, if I was going to buy one, I think it probably would be Beach Bazaar. Because I think I, I can see myself wearing in that on like maybe a summer's evening. Um, how about you? Yeah, I, I'm the same actually. I initially thought that um, Cabaret. I want to call it Cabaret Nocturne. It's Cabaret Nocturne. Yeah. Yeah. I originally thought that was the one, but actually, smelling Beach Bazaar again, I don't think I have anything quite like this. Maybe the Healy is a little bit like it, but yeah. I don't know. I think that saltiness is really interesting. I, I can find it being something that. That would become quite addictive with with more and more wearing. Yeah, and I think it, you know on a really scorching hot summer's day when you're sweating. Yeah, I think that saltiness. I think it would be a really interesting thing to wear. Yeah, Thousand Lakes is nice, but it it doesn't blow my mind. I I I really like the dry down of Thousand Lakes, but I I I disliked the opening. Yeah. So I you know I, I was struggling. Around. Anyway, so if you tried them. Let us know what you think. But I, I, I really, even though I have not fallen in love with these fragrances, I've really enjoyed exploring them because I think, oh wow, yeah, you, you know, it's it's a real kind of journey, and I love um, perfumery, which makes you think, and I think it, it it's mm. it's been achieved here. It makes you think without ever being like wacky. These are all well composed, elegant fragrances. But if you tried them, totally. let us know. And keep making fragrances in Sweden. Absolutely. And it'll, yeah, tell us. I mean, I'm sure we're, we're probably neglecting. There's probably some great houses we don't know about. So please tell us um, so, yeah. so we can explore them. But until next time. I'll see you. Bye. Sniffing. <laughs>